After years of development, the ASME PTC-13 test code is finally here. Airson played an integral part in the development of this code, with two employees serving on the committee. As the code was developed, our test bay kept up with all of the aspects of the test requirements. Airson now has two test bays. The original bay was designed for turbo blowers up to 400 horsepower. Our west test bay is larger and has the capacity for testing blowers up to 1,000 horsepower. First, some background on this protocol and why it's important that the industry develop this standard. When high-speed turbo blowers entered the market in the mid-2000s, it was unlike any other machine. It had a high-speed motor directly connected to the impeller, requiring it to rotate at speeds upwards of 40,000 RPM. In order to reach these speeds, the motor required a special inverter, or VFD, that would convert the 60 hertz power to over 600 hertz. To make sure the speed and power of the machine could satisfy the air needs of the system, while ensuring that the blower would continue to operate safely, a control panel was required. As a result, the high-speed turbo blower was a completely integrated package. The turbo promised high efficiency, as much as 30% greater efficiency than positive displacement or root-style blowers. These methods measured stage-only power, meaning they only accounted for the performance of the air end itself, and they didn't apply to positive displacement blowers. Measuring power for the stage only was more common for multi-stage centrifugal blowers, where the blower itself was a separate entity driven by a motor and commonly controlled by throttling the air inlet valve. For the highly integrated turbo blower, it would be difficult to apply these methods and account for the additional energy required inside the package. The existing methods also had additional challenges that would lead to inaccuracies in determining performance. Airflow could be measured on the inlet rather than the outlet. Depending on the design, there was either some inlet flow that was lost in the process or unaccounted for air from other sources that was added to the process flow. Accounting for the environmental differences between the specified ambient conditions and the test bay ambient conditions on test day was a complicated process. Centrifugal machines are dynamic and the density of the air has a significant effect on performance. A common method of matching similitude to accurately measure power at the specified operating conditions needed to be developed. Wire to air performance needed to account not only for the efficiencies of the individual components, but also the power required for ventilation and cooling. The existing methods also did not account for external components, such as an inlet filter, that would add pressure drop and affect performance. Tolerances on performance varied by the protocol that was used. Whether it was in the acceptable variance in the flow or power, or even in the accuracy of the measuring devices, a common set of standards needed to be developed. As the protocols were being developed over the past seven years, Engineers developed their own individual workarounds. Some would simply specify using ASME PTC-10 and add in the phrase, wire to air. Some would assign restrictive tolerances on power and flow, as low as 0%. Others would levy performance penalties for non-compliance on individual points, charging as much as $30,000 per kilowatt. All of these had a level of inherent ambiguity which sometimes forced manufacturers to make some bid-day decisions. One, adjust the proposed performance to provide some insurance against potential performance penalties and possibly lose a project based on a perceived lack of efficiency. Or, two, take a risk and keep the performance as is, using the ambiguity in the existing codes or possibly negotiating some of the non-compliant points or machines 
into an average performance. Or three, take a risk, hope for the best, and try to negotiate if performance didn't match the proposal. ASME PTC 13 is a welcome answer for both engineers and manufacturers. Here's what it does and how Airzen complies. One, flow is measured on the discharge. Measurement is in accordance with ASME PTC 19.5. Two, test volumetric flow and head are matched to the specified operating conditions regardless of the difference in air density between the test bay and the site using tolerances and calculations that all manufacturers must use in order to comply. Three, power measurement must be measured with a specific accuracy. Four, the envelope of the components to be included must be specified by the engineer. Five, acceptance tolerances for flow and power must be specified. With every manufacturer subject to the same standards, there's less wiggle room. Even though the turbo blower brought about the need for improvements in performance measurement, ASME PTC 13 is not limited to turbo blowers. PTC 13 can be applied to any blower project where performance is a factor in the evaluation, whether it's centrifugal or positive displacement. For several manufacturers, the low pressure screw compressor packages are proving to be as efficient and sometimes more efficient than turbo blowers. This test protocol will provide that proof. The power required for wastewater aeration is 50 to 60 percent of the electric bill for a municipal wastewater plant. In some cases, it consumes 4% of the community's total power. Energy efficiency is a major factor in evaluating blower performance. PTC 13 will prove to be a useful tool regardless of the technology.